So hi, everybody. I'm uh, Jed Grubby. I'm going to outline um, in my time of 10 minutes um, what your ISMRED card do um, and how you can get involved. Um, so um, first of all, to say um, we are the UK's leading anti-racism education charity, um, but we were established here uh, in the northeast of England, um, not with a large government grant, uh, but with one man. Um, who played for the greatest team on earth, who, who are uh, Newcastle United. Um, so, but more seriously, next slide. Um, I, I believe you heard from Shaka yesterday. Um, the next slide's not up yet. Yeah, so Shaka was the uh, founding uh, patron of Shuris and Red Card. Um, the reason he got involved in Shuris and Red Card is... Um, He'd been filling up his car with petrol outside St. James's Park, um, up, just up the road there. And uh, his wife was in the front desk and, and he heard four young lads um, shouting racist abuse at him. I won't repeat what they were saying, um, but he was fearful, even at, at, at six foot two, uh, of, of his safety. So he turned around to confront them to see who these young lads were at the bus stop. Um, and one of them spotted it was Shaka Hislop. And he said, wait a minute, it's Shaka Hislop. And they actually ran over the road to try and get Shaka's autograph. So that incident led to Shaka getting in touch with myself at Youth Against Racism in Europe. It was a long time ago. Um, and we decided then to set up Shuris Mary Card to turn that negative of the racism he'd suffered, but also the power of being a, 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 um, a, a black footballer and, and indeed a football and role model. Now, Shaka didn't give the autographs to them young people, obviously, um, but he did make sure that he got uh, his teammates involved. Now, I, I'm going to give, I'm going to speak to my time, um, so I'm not going to go through all, all the uh, role models we've had, but I'm going to move on to say what we've achieved very briefly uh, in the last 28 years. So the next slide, you will see Chris Kamara, one of our founding parents, uh, wearing a T-shirt that says one in a million. Uh, in March last year, I'm very proud to say that we passed educating one million young people through our education programs, through our workshops, and um, uh, the work we do. Now, I'm very proud of one million, and I'll come on to what we've done since then, because that was March last year. But we saw in the far right riots uh, that, have, uh, that have happened, and, and other speakers have referred to, and I know um, we've got uh, Nick from Hope Not Hate who will focus on that. But we saw in those far right riots the need for our work. So I'm not going to go into the need for our work. But the need for our work wasn't caused by the far right. It was caused by numerous governments that we've had uh, blaming immigrants and blaming uh, Muslims. And, and to give one example, uh, which is Rishi Shunak, stand in front of a, uh, a prime minister's um, whatever they're called, I can't remember what they're called then. With the words, stop the small boats, or stop the boats, to me, was, was one of the biggest disgraces I've ever seen any prime minister do. But we've got the scapegoating of, uh, of immigrants uh, that's been going on for, well, under, under successive governments blaming asylum seekers. And that's why the reform vote in the last election was so big. Three million people voted for reform. Straight after the election, I talked to the MP uh, Ian Byrne for Liverpool, and I also talked to the MP, who, these are MPs who are involved in our organisation, Caroline Noakes, very different MPs, but both support our campaign. One's a Tory in Southampton, one's Labour um, in, in uh, Liverpool. They both said the reform vote is a really dangerous vote because it's working class young people. It's not middle, it's not a middle class vote, and it's not old people. It's young people who should be voting um, for, you know, the Labour Party, Ian said, I don't know what Caroline thought. Um, just to finish off on the far right, because I do want to stick to time. Those riots were the scariest thing I've seen in my lifetime uh, as an anti-racist. The I was in Middlesbrough the day after the the, uh, the roadblock there. If you watch that roadblock, it was a roadblock where people were being stopped if they were black. The young people set up a roadblock and they were stopping people if they were black. Nobody can tell me that was, you know, wasn't about, it wasn't about immigration. It wasn't about uh, uh, being a Muslim. It was pure 
racism on, 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 on the basis of colour of your skin. Now, the other attacks that happened on uh, in Sunderland and in the northeast were on the Muslim community and, as I say, on immigration. And we, we met with the fire service here in the northeast because we had a, a brilliant trade union meeting to combat the far right. And the firefighter said in Middlesbrough, in 20 years and working in the service, he'd never heard people say, leave them in there to burn. But they were trying to kill people uh, in, in, uh, in a, an asylum seeker hostel uh, in Middlesbrough. I will move on. I said I'll move on a bit quicker. I'll move through what we do now. So we, we have an education hub that's available to all of you. Um, on that education hub, um, it was developed uh, over many years with using our education team that we have uh, in, in Shuris and Red Card. Uh, next, sorry, next slide, mate. There are hundreds of, as it says on there, of anti-racist educational resources. Racism has changed over the, 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 the 28 and a half years we've been an anti-racist organisation. We've managed to update all those resources on a regular basis. So anti-Semitism uh, resources are on there. Islamophobia resources on, are on there. I'll touch at the end on a little bit of the campaign we've done around immigration. But all the key resources around uh, Black History Month, around uh, different forms of racism, Gypsy Roma, Traveller racism, are on there. We urge you to join the 33,000 people who've already uh, uh, registered in our, our, um, on there. It's free for you to register and have a look at those education resources. Next slide. Sorry, I, I realise I'm saying next slide now. Um, so 33,000 registered users. Um, 56,000 lessons have been used by teachers, downloaded and used by teachers. And therefore, on a, on a conservative estimate of 30 young people watching those resources, and we know in many schools it's far more than 30, we've reached 1.6 million uh, young people in the last 18 months. That's the way forward. We're trying to get the government to approve the hub, to get that hub in every school in the UK. Um, but also, we're then going to uh, use the resources to, for different other trade unions. So, next slide. Um, what else do we do? We do anti-risk education for adults as well, and we work with the trade union movement. So, our backbone, we, we have had no government money for 10 years. Uh, as a result of the Tories coming in. But our backbone is still the trade union movement. We have the, the same ethos as the trade union movement. Up there, unity is strength, solidarity, and standing together against racism. So we hope your union will come behind uh, and join the other unions that, uh, that support our campaign. And we also politically lobby. So this is the Scottish Parliament uh, who support us, but we're politically lobbying for anti-racism on the curriculum. Now, I think we've got the best opportunity in our, of our lifetimes to get that because it was brought in three years ago in, in Wales. So Wales has anti-racism on the curriculum. The government are reviewing the curriculum for the next few months, in fact, until the 26th of November. And we want to make sure anti-racism is on that curriculum. So we're teaching young people uh, how to combat racism, but also teaching, teaching staff, uh, and not just teachers, but, but the school staff themselves, uh, how to combat racism uh, in their schools. In the next, sorry, next slide. The next thing uh, we're going to show you is what we do in, in a very brief example from Nottingham Forest, which is the club event we did uh, a week ago. So rather than me speaking, I'll just show you a very quick clip from Nottingham Forest of the club event we had uh, in um, September. We have some very special guests. I've been alerted that some guests are here. <laughs> We're at the city ground. We've been hosting a show racing red card uh, anti racism educational event with local primary school kids. Um, and we've been very fortunate to have the great use the great facilities here. We've been doing a lot of work on anti racism, okay, and throughout the morning, and we have. They prepared some very uh, good questions about anti-racism. What's your question? How do you deal with racism? For me personally, like uh, stuff like that happens, for example, the football pitch or anywhere around it on social media and stuff. You don't really try to listen to it, try to read it because it most, sometimes it emotionally affects you. Yeah. In, in a moment on the pitch, it's hard to like be able to control the emotions if something was to happen. I think it's important to have events like today. I never had this when I was uh, growing up. I think it's important to have conversations around racism because I think when you're younger, you can 
maybe hear things from from people and then kind of say it in in situations and not really know the, the true meaning and that can be quite hurtful for other people so I think just understanding the effect that um, racism has on on people um, is really important from a young age and then hopefully that doesn't spread as they grow up. If it did happen to me outside the pitch I think I would speak to someone um, I think it's important to have people around you that you can speak to. Education really about it is it, for me is going to stop it and I think it's the uneducation that kind of causes it in a sense that Maybe people are saying things and behaving in a way that they, they don't understand or they don't want to understand the effects it could have on a person. So, um, yeah, I think one of the best ways to raise awareness for, for racism and discrimination is education. Especially with football, you know, football is society, you know, it shapes uh, conversation. And we can use the high profile nature of ex-football players, current players, like what we've had today to help spread the message. So they can hear the message from parents or teachers even. But then it just adds a bit of, you know, it just maybe, maybe might stick in the minds longer if it's a player that they adore and they watch on the weekend. So, yeah, that's why we use uh, their high profile nature to help spread their message. I know the effect that it can have on an individual, whether that be kind of confidence playing or just confidence in general um, and just your kind of value of yourself and your self-worth. And I think to... For, for people to understand the effect that it really has on on people is it's important so that yeah that people can improve and grow develop as, as humans so yeah it's really important that's it's a big driver for me personally into changing and uh, stopping racism is the education of kids um, and kind of sorting out that kind of the micro issues that never really stops the bigger issues and racism we do have um, a day of action. It's uh, the Show Race and the Red Card Wear Red Day, which is taking place on the 18th of October, where we encourage people to donate um, via the internet, via phone, and to wear something red on the day. So, yep, if you want to wear your forest top, by all means, wear something red. Um, that's how you can support. And also just by spreading the message of anti-racism. So being an example for your family, your friends, to help spread the message of anti-racism. So yeah, we can all do this. So in conclusion, because I've gone over my time, uh, if we go on to the next slide and then the next slide, yeah. Just want to finish on the campaign we'd be doing around immigration because uh, we we like, um, work with an organization called Migrant Voice uh, who work with migrants and we've run a campaign for over 10 years to change the narrative around immigration. I think we should be celebrating immigration in this country, not demonizing immigrants. And immigrants, immigrants run the NHS. Immigrants have helped us in, in every uh, one of our service industries and immigrants of the future for how we're going to get out of the economic crisis we're in. We need to celebrate the fact we are a multicultural nation and that it's been built on immigration uh, from, for, well, this, for, this part of the world knows that because we have the Roman Wall, which was built by immig immigrants, uh, you know, 2,000 years ago from, from North Africa. The campaign's called Making uh, Migration Great. Um, and we, we focused on, obviously, sport and role models, but we believe that that's, that's something this Labour government need to do. Stop demonising people on small boats. Start looking at the bigger picture of what immigration means for our country and celebrate that over, over many, many years. So we hope you'll get involved in our campaign. We hope you'll affiliate to the campaign. We do want you to support Wear Red Day. So next slide is going to be my final one. Um, this is the TUC supporting Wear Red Day. It's next Friday. Um, we've took it from 7,000 10 years ago to 615,000 last year, and there's going to be 700,000 taking part next Friday. So please join us.